Cruel Adventures versus Omnath Adventures. The four color menace has certainly dominated this weekend's discourse, but uh, Autumn Burchett and their teammates, Emma Handy, Luis Salvato, Piotr Glogowski, certainly brought a special one to the table to uh, go up against Omnath Reed. Yeah, no doubt. The Cruel Adventures deck, and as you mentioned, this, this team of players has been a huge story of the weekend mm -hmm. for me. Um, Emma Handy, Autumn Burchett, both making the top eight, and actually, for, you know, they, they they both mentioned one another in their winner interviews, and we got a nice story about sort of the division of labor, the preparation that went into this weekend. Um, Autumn said that they really put a lot of hours uh, burning the midnight oil into the historic Omnath deck, while mm -hmm. Emma, you know, found the Gruel standard deck towards towards the eleventh hour, you know, towards the um, the deck submission deadline, and both of them made their way to the top eight with four wins in both formats. So a lot of, uh, you know, just creative deck building in addition to trust in your teammates and great performance. And, you know, perhaps they'll be able to continue it today. Can't argue with the results, certainly. Uh, both Emma and Autumn really just crushing it the entire way through. And uh, some of the uh, the heroes that emerged in our top eight not choosing to, uh, who chose to beat them rather than join them when it comes to Omnath. Opening things up with the Fable Passage, going to go and search up an Edgewall Innkeeper. And you can see here a couple of tap lands in hand, not just the uh, the Fable Passage, but the Kazandu Mammoth to open things up. But here, worth turn to here, Lucky Clover, uh, a perfect start for Patrick. Go ahead, sorry. Uh, we're, we're joining this match in game number two with Autumn mm -hmm. up a game. So remember, Autumn was the higher seed. They got to choose player draw in game number one, and we're able to convert that advantage into a win. Now we see, uh, you know, in some ways, Patrick's turn. It's 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 game number two. He's on the play. He's got the turn two Lucky Clover. So his prospects are, you know, as good as they're ever going to be. And you can see, yes, in game number two now, Burchett has brought in two copies of Thunder... Oh, sorry, at least two copies of Thundering Rebuke. You can see both of them in hand. A, a nice, neat answer to Omnath. Obviously, we lost Lava Coil to rota a rotation, but a two-mana uh, red removal spell that deals with the 4-4 a very welcome sight in this matchup yeah most definitely uh just really nice hand from from autumn in general uh one of the things about this gruel deck is it's it's not like the blistering speed aggro decks that we sometimes see in fact there's not that many uh hard hitting creatures you can deploy for one or two mana it's a lot more about like let's piece together this impressive battlefield using single potent creatures, turn three, turn four, turn five. And then when you get that opening, bam, it's Embercleave. And then look at this though, that Lucky Clover powering out a copied Petty Theft to just undo five mana worth of plays for Autumn for just two mana from the Brazen Borrower, clearing the path, path for this Omnath. Like without that Brazen Borrower, Autumn's actually in a good spot, right? Like they've got mm -hmm. a decent board build out, they can attack, they can start to put some pressure on uh, after having removed that Omnath. But because that Brazen Borrower cleared the way, Autumn's now back at square one. Well said. Yeah, this this rule deck is particularly good at attacking through blockers. So that can come in the form of Ember Cleave. It can come in the form of Primal Might, uh, mm -hmm. Mutating Gem Razor, or just any you know combination of, of, of removal spells. And that means that if Patrick's play is just, hey, I'm going to play a 4-4 Omnath and hope it's good enough to defend me, that's kind of playing into Autumn's game plan, whereas the Brazen Borrower is a much better and more effective uh, way of, of, of producing some defense. Beanstalk Giant in conjunction with Lucky Clover means that you're getting a Stone Cult two for one. Go and get two basic lands. And, and the important thing here is they come into play untapped. So this means that either we can uh, potentially play a Brazen Borrower end of turn. Not a whole lot else actually uh, going on with. Otherwise, otherwise, he's just casting your Edgewall Innkeeper potentially. Yeah, you can you can deploy the innkeeper and then have brazen borrower ready. The body of brazen borrower is is pretty unimportant, I'd say, in this matchup, mm -hmm. especially in a game where Patrick may be on the back foot. But if you get to convert that to a card draw with Edgewall Innkeeper after the devastating play that you pointed out for us a moment ago, Riley, that's that's a huge win. Yeah, it's not looking too bad here for Patrick, who again is one game down to autumn here. 
Order picking up game number one before we jumped in to this match. In comes the Stone Coil Serpent for two. One thing that's really impressed me, I was talking to Martin about this yesterday, is the, the way that Stone Coil Serpent can kind of just sneak in at any point on the curve, right? Mm -hmm. Like this Gruul deck, it's not the i mean it's very it's it's streamlined enough and it obviously can do what it do its thing pretty effectively but often you'll find you know you have two three mana lying around somewhere and stone cold serpent is the sort of card that you can just slot in whenever you've got a couple lands going uh, going spare because of course it holds a gem razor so so effectively yeah this is particularly important with uh, a lot of enters the battlefield tapped lands from from the gruel deck so either mm -hmm. evolving wilds or the the double faced land spells like kazandu mammoth because if you're if you're trying to curve out one two three and one of those plays is stone coil serpent you're kind of going like uh eh, you know this is a second best play it's not what i dreamed of for my my early creature but when you could go like hey i'm playing a tapped land on turn one i'm setting up and then stone coil serpent is filling in the holes mm. in my curve when i need it to that's like really really effective and i think it, it makes for a great uh you know well-developed package in in the, this rule deck yeah, I think that's just, it's one of the reasons. It, it's a whole lot of small reasons that mean that Stone Core Serpent is very well suited to this deck. Uh, you know, the fact that it has Trample is really important. Reach can also be key, although it's not, it's kind of fallen off uh, Reach as a, as, a, as a key ability in Standard recently. But it is really just that the fact that it can, uh, you know, be the glue that holds your curve together, fitting in more or less at any point on the curve. Here's Love Struck Beast now, Heart's Desire, creating a 1 1. And we'll see if. Autumn wants to stomp this innkeeper. Raisin Borrower, of course, can't prevent that draw there, Autumn. So we'll pick up a card. Uh, Patrick will pick up a card from the innkeeper before it's on its way out. And now a 3-1 takes the skies. Yeah, crucial that innkeeper triggers upon casting an adventure creature and not not upon an adventure creature entering the battlefield. We can't, we uh, saw that be relevant in the Nasif Manfield match yes. because of the presence of counter spells. Now we're seeing it be relevant in this match because of the presence of instant speed removal. You can't kill the innkeeper in response to prevent the card draw. Crucial. So back to Patrick now, who has got a Shatter Skull smashing on the hob, it looks like. This is one of these mythic flip lands, the mythic modal double phase cards that we've seen have such a, a profound impact on the way that mana bases are built, particularly in uh, mono and uh, two color decks. You see him here in a four color le list, taking care of two of those creatures, tidy little two for one. And in comes the Brazen Borrower, able to attack for three. Patrick has, has you know, really had a good draw this game and done a nice job navigating, kind of forcing Autumn to play the game that they don't want to play. Uh, as mentioned, this Gruul deck, it's, you know, it's all about the battlefield and it's so good at winning in combat when both players have creatures. But what it's not that good at is rebuilding when it can't stick an early creature. So, um, you know, we didn't see a ton of hard removal spells registered at all in the standard portion of, of this grand finals tournament. But Patrick here finding ways between his Brazen Borrower, his Shatter Skull Smashing, to actually keep the Gruul player off of creatures. And it's, it's really working wonders in this particular game. In comes the Brazen Borrower for another three. There is a Bone Crusher Giant here as an option for Autumn, who is taking their time thinking about this particular combat step. Embercleave in hand, a very, uh, a very good card to have on tap. Although with uh, Patrick holding Brazen Borrower in hand, it's probably not as going to be as impactful as you may hope. And there you see, you know, a totally fine play at face value from Autumn's perspective, but also another indication that Autumn is not playing the game they want to be playing. In a perfect world, you ignore the Brazen Borrower. Hey, this can't block my red-green monsters. Yeah. Um, and if I go to, to 17, 14, 11, who cares? But, you know, I think Autumn's seeing correctly that this game's going to go long and uh, the Brazen Borrower is really going to add up and put them under some pressure. Look at this as well. So here is a very obvious Embercleave attack, which obviously would be fantastic into this Bone Crush Giant were it not for the uh, the Brazen Borrower. And uh, wow, Autumn's not even actually going to take the bait. Instead, just using Thundering Rebuke to take care of the Giant. Now, that's 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 definitely, you know, a next level play. You are two for one in yourself, but it is a way to get that 9-9 off the battlefield and then play a 4-3 of your own. I mean, 
sniffing out that brazen borrower. You don't want to play the Ember Cleave into a, uh, into a situation like that. Love the play. Love the play. Yeah. A huge factor there is mana efficiency. If you commit your whole your whole turn casting Ember Cleave and it doesn't work out, probably not in the game anymore. That's probably going to be it. But here, Autumn wow, gets wow, to wow. Uh, double spell, kill the, the Beanstalk Giant with Thundering Rebuke, and replace the Lovestruck Beast with Bone Crusher Giant, uh, preserving yeah. Autumn's pretty nice, you know, board advantage. And look at this escaped wild, however. Triple Lucky Clover available now for the Brazilian. Two other lands not doing a huge amount, but given that there's uh, Triple Lucky Clover, Edgewall Innkeeper, and Brazen Borrower in hand here for Patrick, he's going to be able to really get up to some, uh, get up to no good this turn. Is it too much, Riley? Is it is it too many Lucky Clovers? Have you seen that at all on the, on the broadcast <laughs> this weekend? Oh man, have you ever found like a Lucky Clover in real life? I remember I went through a thing, when I found out about them when I was a kid, I remember like pouring over like grass to try to find one. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever found one in real life. I mean, that's why, you know, that's, if they were common everywhere, it wouldn't be, wouldn't be lucky, right? All right, there's the triple Lucky Clover now. And Edgewall Innkeeper in conjunction with that Brazen Borrower next turn. And we saw the Brazen Borrower, the Petty Theft cast before those two um, Lucky Clovers to make sure that the Brazen Borrower would hit the uh, exile zone there rather than just encounter going to the graveyard. Another Bone Crusher Giant. And now we'll probably see Edgewall Innkeeper into Brazen Borrower here just to draw a card, keep the resources flowing here. Yeah, huge draw here. If if, uh, if it's just a land off the top for Patrick Hernandez, he's kind of stuck. He's got all the mana in the world, triple Lucky Clover, nothing to cast. Mm. And here, mm. you know, this game has looked horrible for Autumn at basically every, any snapshot that you would have turned, tuned into this game, you would have thought Autumn, you know, was on track to lose the game. But finally... Yeah have navigated to a spot where Embercleave is going to resolve cleanly and and boy I mean Patrick has a very narrow window to find something something powerful off the top. Yeah look at this Bone Crusher Giant gonna take out one copy of Edgewall Innkeeper and you imagine the one that gets blocked is this are we, we're getting close to it's not is it lethal? It yeah it is lethal. It is actually isn't it because you you Embercleave the blocked Bone Crusher Giant and then with Trample, you can just surge across, but there's not even a block here. So look at this. Embercleave going to get the job done, doing what it does best. And Autumn Burchett snatching a victory out of thin air. Patrick looked to be in firm control of that game for a long time. But no, sir, says Autumn. And uh, puts up a very conv uh, convincing win there, Reed. Wow.